Well, that ain't right. What's up, guys? Hi, and welcome to Uncle Scott's Kitchen. Today, we are going to season this guy. This is a new Matford carbon steel skillet, and it is new in two different ways. It is brand new in terms of it has never been used before. It is also one of the newly updated Matford carbon steel skillets. Around here, you've probably seen this older version here, kind of the classic model. It's appeared in several of my videos over the last four or five years or so. Matfer has updated that pan, and this is one of the new ones. Different handle, logo in the handle. But importantly, the seasoning directions have changed. So the seasoning directions for the older pan were much more in-depth and required a little bit more work than the directions for the new pan. So let's season one of the new ones and see how it works. And then, if everything goes correctly, we will try the old fried egg test. You a little bit nervous? I kind of am, actually. Now, if you remember, if you've ever had a map for before, these older models came with a thick, hard to remove coating, protected the pans in the shipping process. The first thing you always had to do was just scrub the heck out of that thing with a brush, dish soap, hot water. It took about 15 minutes or so of scrubbing. You don't have to do that anymore. So that is a big deal there. The new updated pans come in these bags, which kind of take the place of that protective coating. So we're gonna start out by giving this thing a good wash, but we don't have to do all that scrubbing that we did with the older versions. Then, if anyone remembers, there was always what was called the Matfer method of doing an initial seasoning. Matfer asked you to take the skins of two potatoes, two thirds of a cup of salt, and a third of a cup of oil, and saute those and stir them constantly for 15 minutes. The old directions were very precise about that. Now for the updated pans, you still need to use potato peels, oil, and salt, but the directions are a little bit more ambiguous. There's a little bit more wiggle room here. They're not nearly as precise. After the washing, the directions say to fry in oil, potato peel or slices. So slices is new. It was always just potato peels. Now you can apparently use slices. And it says uh, sprinkle with a lot of salt. Old method, it was two thirds of a cup of salt. Now it just says sprinkle with a lot of salt. And then it says to saute them stirring for a few minutes. And for the old pan, it was 12 to 15 minutes. So there's a lot more wiggle room here and they're not very precise. So how do we know how many potato peels, how much oil, how much salt to use? We don't. We're just going to pick and go with our best judgment here. I think I am going to go with the peels of two potatoes. I know that worked well from the older pan. I'm gonna dial back the salt to a third of a cup. So I'm going down by half. And for the cooking time, the old pan, it was 12 to 15 minutes. I'm just picking a number. I'm gonna go with six minutes and see how it goes. All right, let's move to the sink. Woo! -hoo! So the first thing I wanna do here is give this pan a good scrub, then dry it. Next, I'm going to prepare my potatoes, a task which I somewhat ironically find unappealing. So I get those all peeled up. Now, if you are new to carbon steel, and you probably are if you're watching this video, Stick around after the seasoning. What I'm gonna do is cube these potatoes up and we'll do a little bonus Carbon Steel 101 cooking lesson for how to fry things like potatoes in a carbon steel skillet. So I'm gonna season this one on the gas cooktop. This smaller pan, which I have not unbagged yet, I'll probably do a second video on seasoning that pan on an electric flat top stove. So, Start out with the gas, and if you have a flat top and want further information, look for another video on seasoning a mat for on an electric flat top stove. Okay, here we go. Got my potato skins ready. That's for both rounds of seasoning. I'm gonna start on the big burner here. A little bit lower heat. And for fun, I'm going to start with a third of a cup of salt. A 
let's go with a third of a cup of oil. Stir that around. I'm going to add half of my potato skins. And they started sizzling. I'm going to go ahead and set the timer on six minutes. I'm just going to try to get in these corners, as it were. Well, that ain't right. Seems like a little bit of stuff is actually stuck to the bottom, which I have not seen with my mattress before. Okay, I'm going to dump out this batch, and wipe it out, and we'll come back with another batch. I've actually got some stuff stuck in the pan. So I'm stirring these potato peels, oil, and salt. I'll be darned, it feels like there's some stuff stuck on the bottom. And that's very odd. I don't recall seeing that before in the seasoning process. Okay, now this video has pretty much gone off the rails at this point. Uh, midway through the seasoning, I noticed things looked like they were sticking. The potato peels, the oil, the salt, it just seemed to be sticking. I didn't know if it had to do with the amounts. And I went through that second round of it. It was sticking again. And it actually had to deglaze some sticky stuff off the bottom. That is not right at all. And I, what I did is wash that pan out and I started looking at it. And lo and behold, it looks like these pans are indeed coated. Coated. Now I was told by Mapfer that the reason for these bags is that they protected the pans and there was no need to apply any coating at the factory. That's what they told me. Now, I bought my pans myself, used my own money. I did get to buy early models. So I've got an email out to Matt for going to figure out if these things are indeed coated. I think they're coated, or at least the ones I got were coated. Now, in all fairness, in the new directions, it says something about soaking the pan for a few minutes to remove any remnants of coating. Um, I was told that there was no coating and the whole reason for these plastic bags was that the plastic bags kind of took the place of the coating. But I am not going to season this guy until we find out what's going on. Now there is a line from a classic song. Meet the new pan, same as the old pan. What I did was just get out the uh, barkeeper's friend or actually the, um, the all clad stainless steel cleaner version is very similar to barkeeper's friend. Went back to the old way and just scrubbed the heck out of this pan for about 15 minutes. I could see what looked like some coating on there. And I didn't think there was going to be coating at first, but there's coating on there. Scrubbed the heck out of that thing and went back to the old kind of classic seasoning directions. The ones that I know work. Got two more potatoes, two thirds cup of salt, third cup of oil, skins of two potatoes, and sauteed those for 15 minutes, just like I used to do with the older mapfers. So after that process, that's what I used to do with other mapfers skillets when they were new, kind of ignored the newer directions, went back to the old directions. I think we are back on the rails. We were off the rails, I think we're back on. So I got some color change on the pan. It's very smooth, nothing stuck to it. This is really what I was expecting early on. 
So we were off the rails. I think we are back on the rails. We're about to find out with a fried egg test. I'm gonna fry my first egg in this pan on camera. We'll see how that goes. Always a little nerve wracking. So you got two eggs. Let's see if we can see the pan here. Are we ready? Here we go. First egg. Let me nail the flip. I nailed the flip. All right, egg number two, here we go. Wait for the bubbling to stop. Wash the old hands while it's setting up. There we go, sliding egg. Let's see if we can nail the flip. So we are back on track, and it seems that the best way to season a new mat for pan is to kind of ignore some of the new seasoning directions and go back to what we know works. Go back to the old seasoning directions. Scrub the heck out of the pan, make sure there is no uh, no coating left on there. Then use the peels of two potatoes, two thirds cup of salt and a third cup of oil. Saute those for 15 minutes, wipe it out and repeat. And with the new pan here, we are good to go and we have sliding eggs. My first two eggs slid. Now at the beginning of the video, I promised a bonus cooking lesson. Once I get this egg out of the pan, we're gonna jump over and do those fried potatoes. If you're new to carbon steel, one thing you need to know is that you have to develop a little bit of expertise to cook in carbon steel, particularly if you're moving over from a nonstick skillet. Don't want any burn fried egg here. And what you got to learn is temperature control. So I'm gonna cook those potatoes that we cut up for the, uh, the potatoes I used for the potato peels. I had those cubed up, those have been soaking. First thing I want to do is get those out of the water and dry them off really well. You want to get them as dry as possible. Now potato is still gonna be 90, 95% water. You just don't want a lot of water on the surface. Let's put a test potato in. Not sizzling yet. And sometimes I like to put a test potato in different areas of the pan just so I can check how even the pan cooks. If everything is sizzling in different areas of the pan, then it seems to cook pretty even. Okay, those are sizzling pretty well. No sticking. Let's go ahead and add some more. What you notice here is that these potatoes are not sticking. I've got a pretty high, medium high flame. And that higher heat with the hot oil prevents those potatoes from sticking. Most times when you get some food sticking, it's a temperature problem. There's nothing wrong with the pan. There's nothing wrong with the seasoning. You're simply cooking at the wrong temperature. Now, if you're moving over from, like I said, from a uh, non-stick, nobody really tells you. 
and nothing sticks in your non-stick pan anyway. But you got to change up the way you do things a little bit when you cook in carbon steel. They're still not sticking. And someone's going to say, well, you're just using a lot of oil. Of course they're not sticky. It almost doesn't matter the amount of oil you use. If you cook at the wrong temperature, things are going to stick. And you see, if you cook at the correct temperature, these potatoes are non-stick. So I'm going to find out from Matt for exactly what is going on, whether this bag is the only protection or if there is some sort of coating applied at the factory. Once I find that out, we'll season the smaller pan downstairs on that electric flat top stove. If you want to see that and get the latest on that coating or lack thereof, make sure you're subscribed to the old channel. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again next time on Uncle Scott's Kitchen. And there went an entire roll of paper towels.